Also joining us from the sidelines, David Aldridge. D.A., take it away. Hey, Kevin. Well, the big man, DeMontis Sabonis, is following in his father's Hall of Fame footsteps. We all remember what Arvidas Sabonis looked like when he was healthy, both in Russia and when he came over to the NBA. Domas watched his dad play with the Blazers and dreamed of becoming an NBA player in his own right. Well, he's arrived. Last season, DeMontis became a first-time All-Star. He's certainly doing his dad proud. Kevin? He sure is. Thanks, David. Let's check out Indiana's starting lineup. Sabonis and Turner up front. T.J. McConnell is out there with Karis LeVert. And it's Warren in at the three spot. And for the Nets, we've got Irving. Durant is out there with Harris. Then there's DeAndre Jordan. And it's Harden in at the shooting guard. All teams tonight, Greg, love to push the ball up the floor, even off made shots. You know, trying to find an opening before the half-court D can set up. I think you're going to see more and more of that every year. I agree. He'll be the Nets off the tip. Something with it. And a new group out there on the floor for the... Nets. For Brooklyn, they have shot just one free throw earlier. One for one in the game. Yo, let's go, guys. That one drops. He ties it up. And the former Hoy. Green, a, a rangy forward who can both score and defend from all areas of the floor. Passes it to be Thompson. Here's Brogdon coming in off a 10 point performance last game out. And Lamb, here we go. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. It feels like Malcolm Brogdon, with every repetition, turns that passing from excellent to elite. Good on the triple. And he's not going to miss that sort of an opportunity from deep. Indiana's gone 0-4 from three-point land to start out. Looking cold from outside. Outside, Lamb. And that one, good. They're scoring boatloads of buckets. It's raining buckets from inside. On the wing, Green. Puts one up from 19. Pulled the shot a little up, but the bounce goes his way. Junior's got five. All around the league, the big news for Junior was he won the Player of the Month. Greg, great performance and production from him every game. And when you look at the numbers, Junior was the clear choice. What he gave this team in categories across the board cannot be matched. Fantastic month, punctuated by a Player of the Month award. McDermott, and the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. The Nets have gotten seven of their first 16 field goal attempts to go down here in the first. Here's Lawrence. Offline with his three. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. Well, Doug McDermott, a high IQ basketball player, understands when his teammates are open how to find them. Boy, when you think about Doug McDermott, the last few years with the incredible shooting he brings, he's also been efficient. And though the volume is limited, this guy has done as good a job as he can picking his spots. So it's the Pacers now following the three from Lawrence. Rogged in the pass to be Thompson. And he can't answer back the three-pointer offline. The Nets with the lead. Here's Lawrence. And the Nets, another three. Almost figured it would happen with how we played. And now he has made it official. 
junior grade winning his first rookie of the month award. It's a bit baffling. So many teams passed on junior. He clearly is NBA ready and has been an impact player for this team. This could be just the start of a storied career. And Doris, with McDermott, he knows that's how he's most effective on the floor. That's exactly right, Greg. This guy knows his strengths, and that's his outside shooting, his ability to stretch the floor, the amount of deep shots he takes the last few seasons. This guy is a nice weapon to create space for people around him. And a guy like Justin Holiday, a, a great option off the bench. Consistent scoring threat with that second unit. That's exactly right. And Justin Holiday also provides you solid defense to go along with that shooting, Greg. And he's older now. There's a calmness to his presence while he's on the floor. He's been with a couple of teams. He's been around a little bit. So he's just got to maximize what he does best. Now, here's Junior. In the game against Chicago, very impressive. Boy, has he put his foot on the pedal here this quarter. He's doing a terrific job in terms of leading their offense. Here's Brogdon. Outside, Lamb. Uh, a team's rebounding is a great measure of its energy, and theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. Buries it from three-point range. And now an eight-point Brooklyn lead. Good eye from Cobb. Spotting the wide open man. Sets it up perfectly with that pass. Nice shot by McDermott. Just no resistance inside at all. They are feasting. This is a straight buffet. It is. It's a big one. And load the plate. Now here's Cobb. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Pacers trail by six. Brogdon looking it over. Shot clock at five. And they call over the back here. Too much contact. I'm not sure what he thought he could get away with there. Pretty clear over the back. Yeah, easy call for the officials. Sometimes I think you think you can reach over without making contact, but that was not one of those times. Dinwiddie has checked in for Kyle. And one thing I like about Brogdon is his size. A huge 6'10 wingspan for a guard. Gives him an advantage in matchups. Lets him finish over smaller defenders as well. Six seconds separate in the shot and game clocks. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Well, he's a quality mid-range shooter, but he can't get that one to go. Here's Lawrence. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Junior's got 19 points. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. For three, Brockton. And so it's the Brooklyn Nets bringing the quarter to a close with a seven-point lead. And their three-point shooting has paved the way for them. We'll get right back to the action when we return. And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. And uh, from Brooklyn guys, what jumps out to you stat-wise? I know it's early, but all those three-pointers, boy, do they add up. And that's what has them ahead in this game. Their floor spacing has been just tremendous. On the court for Indiana, Doug McDermott is out there with Jeremy Lamb. Then there's Malcolm Brogdon, and it's Bitadze in at the center, locking down the middle. And here is Brogdon following the three from Lawrence. Outside Holiday. Bitadze with the bucket. Bitadze's got his second bucket of the night. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Junior kicks to Dinwiddie. Here's Lawrence. And a little luck that time, but it drops. Junior's got the lead up to eight now for the Nets. And at the offensive end, he's done about as much as they could have hoped for today. There's the pass to Brogdon. They get a hand on it. And stolen by Junior. And here's the fast break. Here's Brown. Finished off the break. And the Nets lead by 10. Oh, perfect timing there to knock down the teardrop. They double him with Junior. It's stolen by Brown. 
to the wing right side. And a wide open look for Junior. The shot's good. Brown making the play. And it's now 26 points for Junior. Pacers trail by 12. Outside Holiday. Powered down as the whistle blows. A three point play chance. Wow, how about the balance and strength of Malcolm Brogdon? Give him the end one. Jordan, he's checked in for Brooklyn. So an entirely new group in now for Indiana. Miles Turner, he's checked in for Goga Bitadze. Zabonis comes in for Doug McDermott. Warren's checked in for Lamb. And Karis Levert subbed in for Justin Holliday. Pacers have gone a nice 3 of 3 to start the second. Levert with it. Picked up by Brown. Levert against Brown. And slam dunk by Sabonis. This guy is such a good all-around player. Karis Levert sharpening his court awareness and finding his open teammates. Here's Lawrence. From outside, off the mark. Pacers trail by seven. It's Levert on the wing. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Milwaukee. Score the basket, his second of two attempts. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Here's Lawrence. No good, unable to end this run. For Indiana, they've gone a sensational 5 of 5 from the field since the start of the second quarter. And it goes down two points. Now, just a three-point Nets lead. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. Here's Junior after Malcolm Brogdon's bucket. And here is Warren. 17 points for him last game against Milwaukee. I thought his physicality was crucial, too. You know, he kept the defense on their toes and repeatedly got to the free throw line. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. And the first timeout call to the game for Brooklyn. Their last meeting was in this building where they were able to come out on top. And the last time these two met, they were able to get a big win because of that bench production. Second unit might be a factor in this one as well. Certainly something to... Greg, you've always said to have a winning team, you need franchise players. Talk about the specific qualities you look for in those superstars that can catapult a team to greatness. It's a great question, Kevin. Uh, talent really isn't enough. You know, whether you lead vocally or by example, uh, the agenda has to be winning, and your best players really define who your team is going to be. So the franchise caliber player is a much-needed asset. Got that bucket in in no time at all. Junior's got a pair of triples in the second now for Brooklyn. And once again, the defense allowing him to get a clean look at that triple. He continues to do some big-time damage from downtown. And the Nets making a change here. Jordan's checked in. Cobb passes to Jordan. To the paint. And finished off by Katie. What a pretty look. DeAndre Jordan, to have that kind of touch on your passing, such a quality piece for a big man. Indiana trailing here. Has to be Thompson. Back to Holiday. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Free throw, good Holiday. Last outing for the Nets. They won that game against the Bulls in Chicago. Yeah, their long-range artillery hit the mark more often than not. A, a great equalizer when you're on the road. It's always a good thing when the defense is scrambling. Whenever there was open space on the perimeter, their shooters were able to locate it. Pass to McDermott. Down low. Here's Bitadze. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. And since the first quarter, we've seen them ease off on that long-range affair. And frankly, that's probably a good idea. Wasted no time on that one. 34 points for Junior. I'll tell you, this lead's not going anywhere with this guy making plays. What a quarter. Rogged in the pass to be Thompson. Some nice passing here by Indiana. 
And it's Brogdon off the drive. That one's not going to go. And Brooklyn will come the other way. They've held a 12-point lead early. Following this one, they get to host the Hornets. They'll find themselves in the middle of this string of three straight at home. Lamb against Brown. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. It's on Kevin Durant. Gray, good to see Jeremy Lamb back on the floor after his injury. He can still be a productive wing, you think, off the bench for this team. No doubt about it. More of a finisher for this team. Lamb shouldn't have any lingering effects of coming off that ACL. His game's diverse enough to get shots anywhere in the half court, and he'll continue to be a productive player for the foreseeable future. Turner's checked in for Goga Vitadze. They can close out the quarter if they want to. It's all about patience right here. Patience and execution. Get a good look. Coming off a big game, his confidence couldn't be higher, and Coach knows it. Well, the best players, to me, deliver night after night after night. So as long as he's hot, keep riding it. For three, Brockton. And the last second attempt doesn't fall. And that's it for the first half of action. What's been a very close game here? It's the Nets. They finish off the second quarter on a 14 to 6 run. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Hey, Kevin, thanks. Hey, James, we know that scoring seems to come easy for you. How do you create that mentality out there? I just like to have fun. You know, it's all for the kids, it's all for the fans. You know, I think that's what we're here for. And so, um, you know, guys just go out there and compete, have fun, and just play hard. My family doesn't think it's all for the kids, but I appreciate your sentiment. Back to you, Kevin. <laughs> okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. Welcome back. The calendar has flipped over, and so have we into the second half of our broadcast. You look at Junior in this game, he's been everywhere. He's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate within the first few quarters. One of the things every player is after is efficiency at the offensive end, and boy, this young guy has done just that. Junior's out there with Durant, then it's Harden, then there's Irving, and it's Jordan in at the five. So that's the Nets' five. Here's Harden. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Jordan. Jordan's got three assists tonight. Yeah, I, I love watching Harden be aggressive inside. One of the most efficient scorers in our game. McConnell scanning the floor. Turner banked in off the glass. Terrific play call to give him a clean look at the rim. That's how you want to start the second half. Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific start right there. Yeah, they're getting a lot of their points outside the paint. Three of their last five baskets are from three-point range. Pass to Levert. Rebounded by the Nets. Boy, that's one he wishes he could have back, especially against soft defense. And again for three. He has been on the money from deep. Yep, definitely looking to shoot it as much as possible. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Back to McConnell. Six to shoot. Levert against Harden. And it's Levert missing. Well, trying to find themselves in the second half here. Just one for four from the field. Can someone in the group get hot? Let's see. And the basket is good, and he's got a chance That's here for good. one more at the line. Greg, if you're a small market team, how do you convince stars that you've drafted and developed 
to stay and re-sign? It's a great question, Kevin. I actually think in a lot of ways it's easier today because you can be box office. You can be a, a superstar in a small market and have the name recognition uh, because of the era we, we play in. And so I, I think the biggest way to keep them there is to build a championship caliber team around them. I think that is your saving grace. If you can prove to them that you can build a championship caliber team, I, I don't really think that there is a reason to want to leave. It's a solid blueprint. Now the Pacers with it. Lamb with the ball, defended by Dinwiddie. They get the rebound. Another shot. It's a bonus. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. You know what? There, there seems to me to be an infectious energy when we're talking about Domantas Sabonis. This is a big man with a great future in the NBA. And Doris, last season, DeMontis Sabonis turned a corner in terms of development. He became a key cog in this offense. That's exactly right, Greg. Coach trusted him in more pick and roll situations. He allowed him to do more heavy lifting within the offense. And Sabonis has got great basketball IQ. He understands how to make reads, set solid screens. This is a guy who makes people around him better. Now here's Lamb. He has five. And Sabonis the bucket on the assist from Jeremy Lamb. Sabonis has got 12 in the game. Nets leading by 19 points. To the left wing. Here's Lawrence. Connects again from distance. You can tell he is feeling it. Kevin, he's on fire. And so it's Brogdon with it. He brings it up for the Indiana Pacers. They'll be hosting Orlando for the next one. It'll be the first of four played at home for him. KD comes with the double team. Shoots over Cobb. The shot by Brogdon, no good. Brooklyn's gone downtown a lot since halftime. They've missed five of their nine attempts out there. Will not go. This is off the front iron. The pace is shooting with confidence 50% from the field so far. Dinwiddie against Holiday. And for the Nets, they're shooting well. 50% from the floor. Here's Lawrence. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. 48 points for Junior. Well, they're just riding the hot hand down the stretch, and he's been in a zone all night. Now, here's Brogdon. He's guarded closely. The pass to Sabonis. Five to shoot. And Malcolm Brogdon, good for three. 14 points for him. Uh, this guy's been confident since the opening tip. Malcolm Brogdon getting things done offensively. Now a timeout call by Brooklyn. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for Brooklyn. And a change for the Pacers. Turner's checked in. Nets leading by 21. Pass to Lawrence. Over Lamb. And it's Junior missing. And it didn't fall, but that's the kind of shot they want their offense to create. You know, it can be frustrating when you make the right play and fail to reap the rewards. You just have to stay with it here. Props in the layup for two. Jordan's got his first bucket of the night. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Here's Junior with plenty of space. Again, the Nets for two. And what a dish from Hedrick's Cobb. That's his court awareness on full display, folks. Rogged in the pass to Lamb. McDermott with it. There's 18 seconds left to play here in the third. Five on the clock. And pluck the ball with his palm. What a defensive play. Cobb passes to Lawrence. Shoots over Turner. And again, it's Brooklyn converting. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. One thing we've learned in the NBA, the game is never over. So you've got to continue to score, continue to build your lead. 
And so it's Brooklyn, rolling along with a 27-point lead as we wrap up the quarter. The scoring has been tremendous, and they are shooting lights out with very high accuracy. We'll take a quick break, and then back to the action here. And while we can now, let's take a look at today's State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feat. Nothing better than chemistry, right? Working together to create a bucket. And we reach the fourth quarter in a game that may be already out of hand. On the court for Indiana, we've got Miles Turner and it's Sampson in at the three spot. And that one's good, Junior. Well, you love that they've been able to rely on him time and time again. You love the effort here late. Holiday dishes to Turner. Over Claxton. Got a piece of it. Now, Junior. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Green's got three assists in the game. Outside Holiday. Doris, you and I know the quality of play in the NBA bubble was terrific. And some people have said a lack of travel, a possible reason why. The league, we think, looking at ways to reduce travel moving forward. Exactly, Kevin. And one option on the table is the, quote, series model. You see it in baseball, where you play consecutive games against a single opponent. So what about the states with multiple teams, New York or California? Can you play all of those teams in one trip? This not only preserves players, but it also cuts travel expenses, something the league is looking hard at. Miles Turner is simply a workhorse. I mean, he keeps plays alive with his length and activity. The three, yet another bucket. 60 points. This guy cannot be stopped. They've had no answer for him in this one. Now here is Holiday. Defense is right there. Outside Turner, top of the key. And it's in after a nice bounce off the right side. Well, Miles Turner has earned the trust of his coaches. He's got the green light in these catch and shoot opportunities. Here's Lawrence. And another one falls. Amazing. He's been absolutely ridiculous in this game. You get the sense he just can't miss. Pass to Turner. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Well, that ability of Miles Turner to draw that foul to me is about him carving space on the... Out to the right wing. McConnell kicks to Lamb. Outside Warren. Sabonis trying to get open. Warren, good. I'll tell you, tough first half puts it in the rear view. The shooting percentage starting to reflect that. Let's it go from deep. And it's Junior missing. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Warren, the pass to McConnell. And the foul called on Junior. That's his fourth foul of the contest. Oh, picked up his fourth foul. Maybe have to scale back his aggressiveness with plenty of time left in this one. The Pacers making a change here. Doug McDermott, he's checked in for Warren. Jagar Sampson comes in for Lamb. Edmund Sumner's checked in for Karis LeVert. And Aaron Holliday's subbed in for T.J. McConnell. Brooklyn's gone beyond the arc seven times here in the fourth and been successful three times. All night. He just won't let up. The Pacers have got a pretty good rhythm going offensively, shooting 8 of 15 for the quarter. Here's Sumner, guarded by Shumpert. Sumner kicks to Sampson. Passes to Sumner. Lock at six. 
doesn't get it to drop for him. Shumpert with some nice D. Brooklyn's gotten eight shots off from three-point land and hit half of them. And that one's good, Junior. 12 straight points off of three-pointers, and the D looks shell-shocked. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Here's a bonus. It's hauled in by Claxton. And for Brooklyn, they're shooting it really well. 54% from the floor. And it's Junior missing. Indiana's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. A shot by Holiday. Nobody around. No good with the triple. Net shooting it brilliantly here lately. 60% from the field. Pulls up on the wing. The Pacers pull it in. We know, Greg, the NBA is full of uh, superstars, yet you can foul out of the game after six personal fouls, and some have suggested instead just tacking on an extra free throw when a player commits their sixth-plus foul, and, and then they can stay in the game. You know, I, I think something along those lines could make sense. It, no doubt it's tough to see the marquee player riding the bench because it's not just the sixth foul, right? In some coaches, you pick up two in the first quarter, you're done for the quarter. You pick up a third in the second, you're done for the half. Yes. So I, I, I would like to see something, but I think it's got to also be fair. Maybe you get good, another from three. And the threes just keep on coming. Another shot and another make. He's starting to creep up that list now for most three-pointers in a game. We'll see if he can keep going. It, it really does make the game easy for your teammates when you can lead them to the rim that well with a pass. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. Here's Claxton. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And the first one drops. Goga Bitadze is checked in for Indiana. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And so Holiday will bring it up for Indiana. Two minutes. And the foul called on Junior. That will... Free throw drops for McDermott. You know, Doris, I've heard some experts say you look at the six foul limit, the NBA is basically the only sports league that takes stars off the floor. Doris, what would you think if they just tacked on an extra free throw instead? Kevin, I absolutely hate the idea. The best defensive teams at any level of basketball guard at a high level without fouling. There's the drama aspect of a player being in foul trouble, either at the start of the game or down the stretch. It has an impact on strategy. It's something that I'm a traditionalist on. I think the six foul rule should remain in the game. Yes, and, 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 and yep, another basket. And that ties him for third all-time scoring for a single game. What an incredible performance. Absolutely. A game not to be forgotten. He has put on a show. Well, T.J. Warren finishes with authority. We'll give you a salute, sir. Here's Lawrence. And again for three. And what a fireworks display he's shown us tonight. Just keeps knocking him down from deep. Craig, he has just exploded from beyond the arc. That last make tying him for second in most threes in a game. Here's McConnell, and he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. Well, this is one aspect you'd like to see more of from T.J. Warren. We know he's a great scorer. Pretty dime there. And it's Junior missing. Now the Pacers with it. Left side, Warren. Here's Sabonis. He scores his sixth bucket from the floor with that one. He's shot the ball 11 times. Don't you just love watching DeMontis Sabonis get to his spots? This guy's so creative on the offensive end. Connects again from distance. And I don't think I have ever seen a player this dialed in from deep. Well, with that make, he's now Greg alone in second place for most threes in a game. You know, at this point, you have to go for the top spot, right? Just two seconds between shot clock and game clock. And it's Junior missing. Outside Warren. 
to the inside. McDermott, count the bucket, coming off a perfectly placed assist. Well, McDermott is working on that interior game because he has size and touch. And another one falls. 90, a legendary performance. We'll be talking about this one, Greg, for a long, long time. And so it's Brooklyn easily grabbing this one. And the outcome of this one was never in doubt. And boy, they really put in a supreme effort. Uh, it just felt like once they had that lead and it was comfortable, they were not going to relinquish it. And that about wraps it up for Doris Burke, David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and the rest of our terrific 2K Sports crew. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long.